Hi, thank you for taking your time out today to be with us. My name is Phyllis Bullock, and with me is Ann Ramsey. Her trusty assistant. No, no, indeed. We're in this together. Um, we're going to be uh, doing today a demonstration of an acrylic paint pour. Um, it, paint pouring is not nothing new. There are a million ways to do it, and it's a very fun hobby, and you absolutely do not need any talent whatsoever, I promise. Um, today, <laughs> today is just a little extra thing we're doing because of COVID and just to get everybody excited about something. So, uh, but we do have also, uh, we took, took names and took money for an actual class. We are still going to have that. This is not in lieu of that. This is just something extra. So whenever it's safe to do so and we can all get together again, then we will. But in the meantime, we're going to do this today because it's just fun. So, um, acrylic paint pour. I've got a box because I'm going to make a very big mess. Um, I, I have little cups standing up in it so I can elevate my uh, canvas. Is called? canvas. Thank you. <laughs> I have an 8 by 10 canvas. Um, and what you use when you do this, you use paint. So, and this is acrylic paint. It's very inexpensive paint. I don't really think in this type of, of situation the quality of the paint is important. So you're going to use, a, if you do this, you use, you're use you going to see you waste paint, and that's just part of it. So I buy very inexpensive paints, and I've had very good uh, success with them. So, and these, of course, are paints that are available at uh, any uh, hobby, lobby, um, any of them. Michael's, Michael's uh, Walmart. Joanne. Yeah, Joanne's, any, any place. So we've got, and I've mixed part of this up, in, but I'm, I'm going to show you how to do one from scratch. You also need this. This is Floetrol, Flood, Floetrol. Um, it is, you buy this at uh, Home Depot, you can get it at Walmart. This is a gallon because I've used a lot of, I use a lot of it. You can also buy it in a quart size. And what it does is it's a leveler for your paint. You mix it with your paint and then you can, thin it, you're, you can thin your paint with water if you need to, get it to the right consistency, and this is a huge help as you're, while you're doing it. Okay, so this, is, this part is important. All right, so what we've done is, is it's always a good idea to shake this up really well because it does tend to settle, and you don't need a big glob falling out on your, on your canvas. Okay, so I've got, these pretty colors mixed up already. What colors are they? Well, you know, I don't know. This one is Key West. This is uh, Laguna. And this is white. And then I, now I'm going to use Cobalt Blue. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is your ratio of paint to your medium is two parts medium, one part paint. So, put about that much in there. That might be a little too much. But you know, you really don't need to worry about it because, as I said, you're going to end up wasting, and that's just all part of it. It's not that big. Okay, so we have that, and then my blue. You want to shake your paint up really well. a little bit thicker than I think I'm probably going to need, so I might have to dilute it slightly. And that's very important when you're doing this that you're, you have the right consistency. Um, in the videos I've watched, they say it's the consistency of warm honey is what you want. Um, any less than that and it's too watery anymore and it's going to plop and you want it to flow nicely. So let's see what we have here. Mix it up really good, and then you want to, now see that's, that's not flowing well. That's kind of holding on to that stick. So So what this, do you dilute with? Uh, this is distilled water. Okay. Distilled water because our water here is so hard. So I'm going to put just a little bit of water. Try that again. 
and it doesn't take much. That makes a big difference. About how much would you say you put in? Uh, maybe a half a teaspoon. See how that's doing better now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this, this particular one that I'm going to do is called a flip cup. And it's one of the very first that they teach you um, when you start learning this craft. Um, yeah. I've got um, a larger cup, and I'm going to pour all of these cups into this one cup. So, but first, before I do that, I'm blowing over. Okay. In addition to the flow trawl and the paint, I'm using silicone. This is anything, something you can buy at the hardware store. This particular one is called 3-in-1. I also understand that treadmill belt oil is fantastic. And what this does is it, it's an oily substance, so it causes your paints not to mix completely together. It's going to give you gaps, and that's where you're going to find some real interesting shapes, and they're called cells. So that's what this is for. You will get some cells just with this, but this is going to give you uh, a, a different look, and then Anne is going to do yet a different look from this. So when um, when I put my silicone in, I'm just doing a couple of drops, not much, three or four. And you put that in each individual paper. You know, you can put it in each one, you can put it in one, you can put it in three. Okay. I always put it in all of them. I have seen videos where they say you don't need to put it in white. Well, maybe not, I just do, you know. And now when you use silicone or any type of other additive to create cells, you don't want to stir this in very much. You want to barely mix it, because if you stir it in, you've diluted what the process was going to be, okay? So what I do is I just barely move it, barely move my stick. And are these just popsicle sticks? Uh-huh. Okay. Crack and I use sticks. them over and over again, okay. as, as do I use the cups over and over again, you know. Um, and that's fine. I can either uh, rinse it out or I can just pour it out and let the cup dry and then you can use it again. So I don't, I don't like to have to keep throwing stuff away. Okay, so this is what we've got now. Um, the order that you put your paint in is not hugely important. But the last one you put in, let's see. Will tend to dominate. Yes. No. Right. No, right? Because the last one then becomes the, when you turn it upside down, that's the one that's on the canvas first. Oh, okay. Right? Like me. So, yeah, I know, I know. So it, it's, it's backwards of the way I think. Anyway, we're not going to worry about that today. So anyway, here we go. Now, what I'm going to do is... Do you want her to hold the cup for you? Do you want her to hold the cup while you do that? Or no? I'm sorry, I can't No, I think that's part of the process. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, so I've got that pretty Laguna uh, turquoise blue. I've got a larger cup, and all of my paint's going to go in this one cup. So I'm just going to simply pour it in. Now, some people pour it all in, some people pour half in, and they pour all half, and then they come back and, and do it, do the very same thing again, right? I, I don't. I, you know, there's just so many ways to do this. Second color is white. And it's just, um, it's just whatever works for you. So, okay. And I always use white in my pores. White, to me, creates a lot of contrast regardless of what other color you've got in there, so it makes it more interesting. And what I have noticed is that uh, if I use darker colors, you see these are all, except for this cobalt blue, these are all fairly light colors. Because if, what I find on, on my work is, uh, if I use a dark colors, they tend to go together and become mud. 
and you know, and then the canvas is just dark. And I, I, I just don't like it. But I mean, I have seen some beautiful pours done with jewel tones, but personally, it, it, it doesn't work for me. So here we go. Okay. That's a lot more paint than I need. <laughs> I always do that. Okay, so now we've got the paint in here. And it looks mostly turquoise at this point, but all the colors are in there, and they are mixing slightly just as I'm standing here. Because, you know, it has to do with the density of the paint. Some paints are very dense, some aren't, so then that controls your outcome um, as well. Now, I don't know the density of all the paints, so I don't even consider that. I just consider color um, when I'm doing that. Because this is strictly a hobby for me. So, okay, so I'm putting my canvas right on top of it with the paint, turning it over, putting it on these little cups, and the reason for the cups, I've got newspaper down in here to try to minimize the mess, and if I let, if I don't have the cups in there, my newspaper is going to dry stuck to the back of my canvas. Okay, right? Okay. So that's the reason for that. Okay, now we're almost done here, believe it or not. This is like the last thing. So I'm going to pull this up, and all the paint is going to start to flow. It's going to look really pretty, and then we're going to go, but what, what do we do now? So we might want to tilt it. We might want to do different things to it. But first, let's see what we've got, because you never know. No two come out the same. Okay, so here we go. Ooh, it's really got suction. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Lord. That's pretty. Can you see it? Can you see it? Or do you need to come up here? No, you're good. Okay. okay I am going to tilt it slightly because I, I, I want it to cover the canvas. And I also want it to slightly pour off because I want it. I want to cover the sides as well. Okay. Now, if you see something absolutely gorgeous, sometimes you can't avoid pouring it off, and that's a shame, but see, I kind of like the dark. I, we're going to see what happens with this. See, I'm losing part of my dark. back a little bit and see I can let it run just a little bit to get that pull that blue towards the center a little more okay so now not all of my canvas is covered completely I can see that some of my little corners are not so in that case it's time to pick up a little bit of paint off of the the uh, your paper or you can just stick your finger in one of these but this is already mixed up just like that is and then I'm just going to take it and dab it. And it's going to blend in and you'll never know that that wasn't the way that it was. So I'm going to do that all the way around to any parts that, because if I had kept tilting it, I was going to lose even more of what I kind of liked, which was the dark color. So, that's so pretty. Thank you. Lark, you've never done this. Do you have any questions? Have I said enough to where you kind of get what I'm doing? Yeah, I got what you're doing. It didn't look too technically difficult. No, it's not. <laughs> and we're at 13 minutes, just so you know. Oh, okay. So well, we just saw Phyllis's flip cup, and it's obvious now why it's called the flip cup. And I would like to do a flip cup if there's time, but I'd also like to show you a different technique that is called an acrylic pour swipe. So I have mixed my colors uh, the way Phyllis described. The one difference is my colors are metallic. I thought that might be a fun contrast. And I'm using a product called coconut milk instead of the silicone. This is actually a hair product that's sold at places like Walmart in the uh, ethnic hair care section. So I have my coconut milk in all of them except this one right here. I'm putting in a couple drops and doing my X movement like my friend Phyllis taught me. Mine's going to be a red, white, and blue swipe. So I'm deliberately leaving a section there. I'll, you'll see why later. 
I'm going to pour stripes of color. There's some red. There's some white. Now, are you mixing them up yet, or you're just pure no. color? No, these are these are pure color. Yeah. These are stripes. I have a lighter blue <clears throat> and a darker blue because uh, they say uh, when you do any any visual art, it's always good to have different values of color. So I'm doing that on purpose. I didn't quite finish filling the canvas yet, so I'm going to repeat my colors. So it, the paint is, it's not scientific, right? You're just... Oh no, not the in the problem. slightest. <laughs> and that's why there's... There's That's what's no so fun about it. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just play. Very patriotic. Okay, so as Lark pointed out, there's nothing whatsoever scientific. So I've laid down my uh, my stripes of color. I left this blank here because I'm going to swipe with blue that I've mixed with black. I wanted it to be darker than the other colors. One of the things that I love about acrylic pour painting is that you can kind of try to plan your painting, but you never really know what it's going to look like. And to me, it's always miraculous. This is, as you can see, paper towel that I've dipped in water. Some people use saran wrap, but I've had better results with paper towel. And what I'm going to do is, as the name implies, I'm going to swipe. This part is really messy. So right in here, I don't like what happened. So I'm going to take some more paper towel and swipe the opposite direction and see what I get in this section that I don't like. So if something doesn't turn out the way you want, you can just pretty much keep playing. I'm going to leave that the way it is. It's not perfect. I, well, I take that back. I'm going to do one more slide. Right in here. There. That's cool. So... I'm not worried too much about this section where it has some places where the paint didn't stick because what I plan to do is take a photo and then use the photo for the purpose that I want to use it for so I'm not going to worry about that. And I deliberately mixed up a lot of paint because I wanted to do a flip cup. And this will give you an example of how each flip cup pour, although we have similar colors, Phyllis and I, each one turns out completely different from another, and it's really hard to predict what might happen. But it's always fun. I don't have much left from there. I'll put in a little more white. So what I'm doing is layering colors, Phyllis didn't. 
but I'm trying to get up. I've learned from experience I want to get up about to that line to fill the canvas this size. So as you can see, it's really a quick process. The time-consuming part is setting everything up. So I noticed that both of you turned it upside down and then just let the cup sit for a minute or so. Right. And what happens when you're doing that? The paint mixes up differently? Or? It kind of settles. The layers kind of settle. I don't know any more scientific okay. explanation yeah. than that. That's just <laughs> I can now see why you wear gloves. Oh yeah. Oh my god, this is beautiful. And so different. Color-wise, the main difference is um, I have the red and Philistine. Gravity. Yeah, it's just the way it. It looks very marbly. It does. And I didn't have quite enough paint in my flip cup, so I'm gonna have to cheat a little bit and pour some more in. It's a very forgiving process. As you can see, I didn't quite pour enough, so no harm, no foul. I just add in some more. We'll have a close-up view in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So... That's it. I'm picking up a little from the sides to cover where the paint didn't reach, and it's a done deal. Yay! Good job. Okay, so this has been a few minutes now. It looks slightly different than it did just after I finished it. Some more of the cells have started to come to the surface. Um, what, what we can also do is, um, this is a, a culinary torch. And you can hit it like this, very lightly. Don't get too close, you don't want to burn the paint. And that will also help bring a few more cells forward. So you just never know what you're gonna get. And to show that to you, I brought this one. This is another poor painting that I did exactly the same way. And look at the difference. It's just, it, it has to do with the density of the paint, as we said. So that's, that's, um, that's what keeps it fun. Now, one more is that I did this one. I did the background. Of course, this wasn't on there, but I did the background, and then I thought, that is the most boring thing I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> it looks like ugly wallpaper. So I thought it looked like a background rather than a focal point. I decided I wanted something more on it, so I drew a dragonfly on it, and then I was, then I was pleased. So even though you don't like what you've got, a lot of times there's a way to salvage it. And I also want to say that there's a website called acrylicpouring.com and it will give you so much information, everything you need to know if you want to go forward with this. Go ahead, Anne. So my swipe has had a moment to uh, settle a little bit and I don't know if you can notice the difference. Some uh, colors are becoming so prominent, they're rising from the surface. I've taken a paint stick and just dabbed in a little bit of color to cover up some areas I didn't like. So, uh, Phyllis was talking about one way to salvage a painting, that's another way. And mm -hmm. here's the second one. You may notice that there's some darker blue that's beginning to come to the surface here. And just one other thing to point out, uh, Phyllis had mentioned cells, and that's what you call these organic uh, amoeba-shaped areas where the uh, silicone or the dimethicone has caused the paint to separate. Very pretty. Very pretty. Yay.